चहे मदीना सुनो इलते जा खुदा के लिए करम हो मुझ पे हबी बे खुदा खुदा के लिए हुजूर गुन चाहे उम्मीद अब तो खिल जाए तुम्हारे दर का गदा हूँ तो भीक मिल जाए भरद झोली मेरी या मोहम्मद लौट कर मैं न जाऊंगा खाली भर दो झोली मेरी या मोहम्मद लौट कर मैं न जाऊंगा खाली भर दो झोली मेरी या मोहम्मद लौट कर मैं न जाऊंगा खाली लौट कर मैं न जाऊंगा खाली कुछ नवासों का सद काटा हो भर दो झोली न बीजी भर दो झोली न काजी भर दो झोली न बीजी भर दो झोली तुम्हारे आस्थान से जमाना क्या नहीं पाता तुम्हारे आस्थान से जमाना क्या नहीं पाता कोई भी दर से खाली मांगने वाला नहीं जाता भर दो झोली भर दो झोली मेरी सरकार मदीना भर दो झोली मेरी ताजदार मदीना लौट कर मैं न जाऊंगा खाली लौट कर मैं न जाऊंगा खाली तुम जमाने के मुख्तार हो या नबी बेकसों के मददगार हो या नबी सब की सुनते हो अपने हो या गैर हो सब की सुनते हो अपने हो या गैर हो तुम गरीबों के गमखार हो या नबी भर दो झोली भर दो झोली मेरी सरकार मदीना भर दो झोली मेरी ताजदार मदीना लौट कर न जाओ बंद दीदों में भर डाले आंसू दिए मैंने दर्दों को दिल में बंद दीदों में भर डाले आंसू दिए मैंने दर्दों को दिल में जब तलक तू बना दे न बिगड़ी दर्द तेरे न जाए सवाली भर दो झोली न बीज भर दो झोली मेरी सरकार मदीना लौट कर मैं न जाऊंगा खाली खोजते खोजते तुझको देखो क्या से क्या या नबी हो गया बेखबर दर बदर फिर कर दे करम नबी मुझ पे भी जरा सजब तलक तू 
जब तलक तू पना दे न दिल की दर्द तेरे न जाए सवाली भर दो झोली मेरी या मोहम्मद लौट कर मैं न जाऊंगा खाली भर दो झोली न बीज भर दो झोली हम सब की भर दो झोली या काज भर दो झोली न बीज भर दो झोली भर दो झोली मेरी सरकार मदीना लौट कर
It is perhaps in our nature to see life as a series of choices between sharply defined dualities. But in fact, life is more a matter of avoiding false dichotomies, which can lead to dangerous extremes. The truth of the matter is that we can address the dysfunctions of fragmentation without obscuring the values of diversity. A cosmopolitan ethic will also be sensitive to the problem of economic insecurity in our world. It is an enormous contributing factor to the problems I have been discussing. Endemic poverty still corrodes any meaningful sense of opportunity for many millions. And even in less impoverished societies, a rising tide of economic anxiety can make it difficult for fearful people to respect, let alone embrace, that which is new or different. This problem has been compounded by the very advances that have long been the source of so much hope. I'm thinking here, for example, about medical advances that have dramatically increased human longevity. People live longer, but they often find that they have outlived their resources. The developing world is now facing a major challenge. How does it care for the elderly. Even in more developed societies, social changes have eroded some of the domestic support that once eased the burdens of the aging. How, we must all ask, will we manage the new challenges of longevity? All of these considerations will place special obligations on those who play leadership roles in our societies. To me, one of the most important issues for any society in any part of the world is that it should be driven by hope. Uh, the moment that people of any generation, of any age, lose hope, uh, it is a very, very damaging thing for that community, that society. So, uh, creating circumstances of hope is to me very, very important indeed. Ba barnamay bastab jumashab khosh amadid. Welcome, yali madad, karibu, bianvinu, assalamu alaikum. Name man akhtar primji ast. Man nazira primji hastam. Man raushan jana hastam. Man amir jana, padar bazorg zahra primji hastam. Bale daqiqan, an padar bazorg man ast. Name man zahra primji ast. و بسیار خوشحالم که امشب با ما پیوستید. خوشحالم که امروز اصل در کنار ما هستید و ما از میزبانی شما از محل پریمجی در ونکوور خوشحالم. اما این بار همانطوری که میبینید من افتخار میزبانی همراه با عبر قهرمانانم را دارم. من بسیار خوششانس هستم که امروز فرصت صحبت در مورد موضوعی پیرشدن را با مثالهای عالی خودم که در کنار من هستند دارم. ما میخواهیم از هم اعضای جماعت بگرمی استقبال کنیم. و همچنین اعضای خانواده های چند مذهبی که سراسر کانادا و همچنین سراسر جهان با ما گوش می دهند. او زهرا وقت تماشای برنامه تعمل جمع شب است. این هم چای شما دیگر نیاز به یخنی نیست. زهرا این هم مقدار بادام برای شما. متشکرم. من هر بار برنامه جمع شب را تماشا می کنم و حالا می روم. اختر منتظر من باش. مردها رفتند و ما سه خانم میزبان این برنامه خواهیم بود بله قطعا پدر بزرگم ذکر کرد که او عاشق برنامه های باستاب جمعه شب است یکی از قسمت های مورد علاقه او هفته گذشته بود جایی که ما در مورد نعمت های جماعت خانه در زندگی خود صحبت کردیم خیلی خوب است که جماعت خانه دوباره بازگشایی شد اینطور نیست مادر او بله همه بسیار بسیار خوشحال هستند کامپیوتر اسامی ما را نشان داد و ما به جماعت خانه رفتیم ما بسیار لذت بردیم آرامش دهنده بود شکر مولا من واقعا خوشحالم که از جماعت خانه لذت بردید من میدانم که همه ما لذت بردیم پدر بزرگم هر بار با من تماس میگیرد تا از من برای ثبت نامش تشکر کند بنابراین فقط برای اینکه بدانید من کامپیوتر نیستم اما بله در صورت ثبت نام 
در تخصیص جماعت خانه کمپیوتر شما را انتخاب می کند. به هر حال همانطور که دیدید من امروز اینجا یخنی ندارم. در عوض من دو نفر مهم در زندگی خود را در اینجا دارم که با من میزبانی می کنند. مادر بزرگ 85 سالم را که در الدوت کینیا به دنیا آمده است و همچین مادرم را با خود دارم. سن من را نگو. سن او را فاش نمی کنم. اما او در نایروبی کینیا به دنیا آمد. فکر کردم سن من را ذکر می کنی. بله. مادر بزرگ من چیزهای زیادی با من آموخته است. بسیاری از درس هایی که در طول سالها از او آموختم و من در واقع امیدوارم که امروز در مورد آن و روان پیری صحبت کنیم. بنابراین مادر بزرگ من یک سوال شما دارم. راز شما برای داشتن یک زندگی شاد، سالم، فعال و کامل چیست؟ زهرا وقت نداریم در این باره صحبت کنیم. نکته بسیار خوب. من امیدوارم که حداقل ما بتوانیم مکالمه را شروع کنیم. و امیدوارم که شما می توانید مکالمه خود را در خانه و همچنین با عزیزان خود شروع کنید و سپس انشاءالله بعد از نمایش همه ما می توانیم در خانه خود در مورد پیر شدن برازنده این مکالمه را داشته باشیم ما با اندازه کافی در برای خودمان صحبت کردیم ما اصر امروز یک نمایش عالی برای تماشا داریم و به زودی رئیس حیب امیر علی کاسم لاکا را دعوت خواهیم کرد و ما همچنین در مورد برخی از داستانهایی که اعضای دیگر جماعت در مورد چگونگی تغییر و تحولات مختلف با افزایش سنشان دارند تعمل خواهیم کرد. خب این تغییرات فقط وقت پیر می شوید اتفاق نمی افتند. آنها همچین در جوانی اتفاق می افتند. بله، نکته بسیار خوبی هست. خیلی خوب خواهد بود اگر کسی بتواند ما را در مورد تمام آن تغییرات مطالعه کند. ما بسیار خوشانس هستیم که کهیر لالجی مدیر اجرایوی یونایتد وی را در کنار خود داریم. او در همکاری با مؤسسات جماعتی ابزار را ایجاد کرده است که به شما امکان می دهد این نوع مکالمات را در خانه انجام داده و تسهیل کنید و اکنون می دانم که قسمت مورد علاقه مادر بزرگ است بله این قسمت مورد علاقه من است ما این نمایش را با اجرای موسیقی به پایان خواهیم رسانید اما قبل از آن ما از رئیس صاحب امیر علی کاسم لاکا استقبال خواهیم کرد برادران و خواهران عزیزم یا علی مدد الحمدلله طول عمر به دلیل شیوه زندگی سالمتر و پیشرفت در تبابت در حال افزایش است احتمال دارد در طول 20 سال آینده تعداد افراد 65 سال و بالاتر در کانادا 70 درصد رشد کند این در حال است که شبکه های ایمینی عمومی و ترهای تقاودی یا بازنشستگی دولتی که عواید اقتصادی تهیه می کنند محدود می شوند تقاضاها در سکتور عمومی که برای مراقبت های بهداشتی و درمانی هزینه می کنند افزایش می آبند. زیرا افراد بیشتر وابسته به این نواید هستند. نگرانی این است که بسیاری از سالمندان با از دست دادن درآمد، تغییرات زندگی، هزینه مراقبت های بهداشتی و کمبود پساندازها دچار مشکل مالی می شوند. علاوه بر این سالمندان اکثرا احساس تنهایی و نداشتن یک امراه می کنند. آنها همیشه به پرستارهای قابل دسترسی ندارند. بسیاری از آنها فرصت ندارند که از وقت خود به صورت خلاقانه استفاده کنند. بنابراین بسیار مهم است که ما پلانهای مناسب در نظر بگیریم. در حالی که ما ابزار و ظرفیت آن را داریم که پیش از این که مسئله پیش بیاید، تدابیر مالی و عاطفی در دوره بازنشستگی را در نظر داشته باشیم. همان طوری که ما برای آموزش و پرورش شغل و مسائل مهم دیگر در زندگی برنامه ریزی می کنیم، باید برای سالهای آخر زندگی خود نیز برنامه ریزی کنیم. برنامه ریزی برای دوره سالمندی یعنی فکر کردن به سلامتی و حمایت های اجتماعی که ما با آن نیاز داریم. تا در خانه و یا کامیونیتی خود تا حد امکان زندگی بهتری داشته باشیم. اصطلاح سالمندی آسوده به معنی این است که بتوانیم در دوره حیات خود به طور مستقل بدون مشکل جدی زندگی کنیم. کیفیت زندگی در زمان پیری را چه تشکیل می دهد؟ در آمد کافی در هنگام بازنشستگی، استفاده معنادار از زمان، عبادت، دسترسی به جماعتخانه، زندگی با عزت، فعالیت های با کیفیت، سلامت عاطفی، دسترسی به مراقبت های بهداشتی با کیفیت 
و ارتباط با دوستان و عزیزان را می توان در زمره کیفیت زندگی به شما آورد. سالمندان آنهایی که پا به سالمندی می گذارند و پرستاران در جماعت ما باید از این مسائل و کیفیت زندگی که ما به دنبالیان هستیم آگاه باشند. جماعت در هنگام جشن الماسی به خاطر دارند که مولانا حاضر امام مراقبت از سالمندان را یک اولویت کلیدی معرفی کردند. این تاکید مولانا حاضر امام تا امروز ادامه دارد. این موضوع در مرکز توجه برنامه های مؤسساتی ما قرار دارد. بر مبنای امین روحیه بود که کنسل ملی کانادا با همکاری سازمانی یونایتد وی یک ابزار آنلاین را برای آسودگی سالمندان به وجود می آورد. من خوشحالم که به اطلاع شما می رسانم که این ابزار همین امشب راندازی می شود. هدف این است که اعضای جماعت بتوانند بر سالهای آینده زندگی خود کنترل داشته باشند. این ابزار یک دفترکه آنلاین است که ترتیبیان به دست خود شما است و در زمینه تعمل، گفتگو و ایجاد یک طرح عملی شخصی در مورد سالمندی به شما کمک می کند. این دفتر سه بخش دارد خودآزمایی، بخش تعمل و تفکر و برنامه ریزی فردی تکمیل این دفترچه مدت پانزده دقیقه طول می کشد و مسائل سلامتی، محیط خانه، امنیت مالی و عوامل حمل و نقل را در نظر می گیرد ما افراد بین 50 تا 65 سال و پرستاران این افراد را قویا تشویق می کنیم که زمان را برای تکمیل این دفترچه در نظر بگیرند و همراه با خانوادهشان در مباحث مربوط به نیازهای آیندهشان شرکت نمایند این ابزار آنلاین در وبسایت ما موجود است به خاطر داشته باشید که سالمندی فعال برابر با سالمندی سالم است اما طور که پیر می شویم باید در کمال سلامتی فعال باشیم فعال بمانیم رفاقت من را حفظ کنیم شبکه ارتباطی من را حفظ کنیم از دین و ایمان خود قوت بگیریم و داوطلبانه با زوال عقل، انزوا و از دست دادن اعتماد به نفس مبارزه کنیم. برنامه ریزی برای دوره سالمندی به ما این امکان را می دهد که قبل از مواجه شدن به مسائل بالقوه تصمیم گیری کنیم. دانستن واقعیت های پیری و پیشبینی تغییرات پیش از وقوع ما را قادر می سازد که تا با متانت و آرامش با واقعیت سازگاری کنیم. سالهای آخر زندگی ما باید عمیقا رضایت بخش باشند. برنامه ریزی اولیه ما را قادر می سازد تا سالهای آخر عمر را با کیفیت بهتر سپری کنیم. بنابراین من به جماعت ما می گویم که از این ابزار برای سالمندی آسوده استفاده کنید. برای زندگی فردای خود امروز برنامه ریزی کنید. تشکر از توجه شما و خدا حافظ. از رئیس صاحب متشکرم که برای ما توضیح دادند که چیگونه ادارات با ما کمک میکنند تا برای آینده برنامه ریزی کنیم. و البته فعال بودن در برنامه ریزی برای زندگی و آینده ما قسمت بزرگ از ایمان ماست و به اولین امام ما برمیگردد. البته برای ارائه زمینه و آموزش بیشتر این مورد ما میخواهیم از یک مهمان ویژه با دیدگاهی مبنی بر ایمان استقبال کنیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم من بزفت جماعت یعلی مدد One of the hallmarks of our tradition throughout our illustrious history is our ability to encounter the ups and downs of life and the resilience of our jamaat to bounce back much better than before If we study our past we will very quickly learn of many examples of times of happiness and times of challenges, times of growth and times of less growth. However, in our history, we will notice a distinctive quality of our Jamaat to bounce back with a sort of inner energy that allowed the Jamaat like a trampoline to revive itself, and most importantly, better than before. These examples are numerous in our history, from the Hijra of the Prophet to Medina, the event at Karbala, Dore Satar emerging into Fatimids in 909. The Fatimids, after the events of 1094, 1095, 
emerging into Nizaris, appearing at Alamot, and the revival of post-Alamot Iran, etc. In our recent history, also, there are numerous similar examples from various struggles and migrations of the Jamaats from many parts of the world, sometimes due to oppression, sometimes due to political upheaval. I'm sure many of you are thinking about your own migrations and your own struggles, whether it were in Stenleville, Kesangani and Brazzaville in 1964, Burma or Uganda or Mozambique in early 70s. In all these examples, the Jamaats came out of their particular crisis much more stronger, much more united, much more spiritually aware and grounded, and in many cases, much better than before. Now, I'm not suggesting for a minute, my brothers and sisters, that these times were not difficult and that there were no loss of life or assets. However, our Jamaats looked at the challenges in its face with faith, with hope, under the guidance of the Imam of the time, confronted them and bounced back better. Maulana Hazar Imam Salvatullah Alehi made a comment at AKU convocation in Pakistan in 2007 when he said, quote, we must look through today's problems, through today's problems, to tomorrow's opportunities, unquote. At the heart of these examples of revival are the blessings and the guidance of the Imam, a loyal, faithful Jamaat and a united Jamaat, one family holding the hands of each other. Maulana Hazri Imam calls this the Ismaili will which is marked with faith, courage, and strength. The Imam reminded the Jamaats here in Canada recently to be ahead of the game and that we are out there to win. Now, I have set a foundation for you and based on that foundation, given where we are in the pandemic today, how can we be ahead of the game and win this battle. What do we do to ensure that the new normal is better? How can we plan better for the opening that is inshallah imminent? I propose here three important points and takeaways for our memory. First, planning. As we move forward to build a new normal, let us take all segments of the Jamaats together, from children who have suffered due to unusual school schedules, to the seniors and all segments between them. Just as we plan for our education, careers and other major life milestones, we must plan for the elders consciously and help them their entry into this normal, new normal, which we, which we want it to be better than the old normal. We need to plan for the regular practice of faith and community life, economic well-being, and more importantly, mental well-being. This can only be realized first within families, with consultation, with discussion, and then within the community. So let us start this conversation about the future that is imminent for our families. The time has now arrived. So the first takeaway this evening is planning and consultation. Secondly, we must not lose the opportunity of learning from this experience of the past 15 months. What have we learned from the pandemic? Of course, we have our own personal learnings, but generally speaking, we have learned that life is fragile. Each breath is a gift from Allah. We have learned the value of clean air. 
we had learnt about the value of Chamatkana and the quiet moments of prayers and contemplation of Tasbih. We have learned the value of Jamatkana and the community life that emerges out of Jamatkanas. We have missed the sound of Hazinda. We have learned the lesson of balanced life because life became imbalanced slightly during the pandemic. So the second point is not to miss the opportunity of learning from the pandemic. Otherwise, it will be an opportunity lost. The third point for our memory is that in the Quran Sharif, Allah grants humanity the agency, the freedom to pave their own way through reflection, tafakkur, and intellect, akal. Terms that are used in multiple derivatives within the Quran more than eight hundred times. That is the importance of tafakkur and akal. Thus, what we do with the lessons of pandemic as individuals, as community, as jamaat, as one big family, it is entirely up to us. It is our responsibility. In a hadith which we all know related by Anas bin Malik quoted by Tirmidhi when a Bedouin was leaving his camel untied, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam asked, Why are you not tying your camel? The Bedouin said, O Prophet of Allah, I put trust in Allah. The Prophet said, Tie your camel first, and then watawakal, and then rely and trust in Allah. The Qur'an and the teachings of the Prophet are clear about human agency and our responsibility to plan for the future. If we fail to plan today, we are planning to fail for the opening which is imminent and very close. In order to ensure we build a new normal better, we as a Jamaat must plan with all segments of the Jamaats together. Hazrat Ali alayhi salam in his teachings taught us that such kind of a thinking is part and parcel of faith using human intellect. In Surah Al-Ra'ad, which is Surah 13, verse 11, Allah says, In Allah la yughayiru ma bikomin. God does not change the condition of any nation, any people, hatta until yugayiru ma anfusihim, until they change within, within, anfusihim, within themselves. Inshallah, as we see the light at the end of the tunnel, the Quran al Majid promises us, fa innama al usri yusra. Indeed, there is ease after every difficulty. And Allah emphasizes this in the Quran because he repeats this ayat. So the earlier ayat is number five and then ayat number six is Innama al-usri yusra. Indeed, there is ease after difficulty. I would invite the Jamaat to pick up the Quran tonight and read this short Meccan Surah al-Insharah. 94, Surah 94, not only for its message, but for the beauty of its language and the poetry. These verses of the Quran gives us solace. They give us agency to think, to plan, and indeed to look forward to a better tomorrow. We want our seniors to look forward to a better tomorrow. At the institutional dinner during Golden Jubilee, Mawlana Hazri Imam reminded us of his confidence in the Jamaat, his confidence in its institutions, his confidence in the wisdom of the Jamaat, its knowledge, its willingness to help each other and to have the courage to think past crisis. So he wants us to do proactive thinking so that we think 
past crisis. Be proactive. Think as one big family, as one jamaat. Let us listen to Molana Hazri Imam's inspiring words. And I have to say that as I look to the future, I have a deep sense of confidence that the Jamaat around the world is finding its position in the various countries, that our institutions are beginning to have an impact on the quality of life and the quality of thought and the quality of governance in the various countries where we are living. And I say to myself, that is due to what? It's due to your wisdom, your knowledge, your willing to help each other and to have the courage to think past crises because that ultimately is the nature of what we all have to do is to think past crises and to think as one family which is what we are we are one family whether the Jamaat comes from Tajikistan or Afghanistan or Syria or East Africa it is one Jamaat in conclusion let us remember the inspiring words of Maulana Hazri Imam, the important points that were made by Pre President Saib tonight in his address and the points we discussed on planning, reflecting on what we learned from the pandemic and our responsibility and agency today to build back a better new normal for us and our seniors. Thank you for your attention and Yali Madad. خیلی ممنونم که به من آموزش دادید و من باید به با آینده فکر کنم. و البته برنامه ریزی از قبل به بهترین وجه از طریق تجارب واقعی زندگی آموزش داده می شود. بنابراین اکنون ما از برخ اعضای جماعت در اینجا استقبال می کنیم تا تجارب و داستانهای شخصیشان را با ما به اشراک بگذارند. In the summer of 2018, my mom, Parin Ali Mamad, was diagnosed with cancer. It started in early July. She noticed some changes to her health. She started having trouble swallowing food and she began losing a little bit of weight. Um, it was summer, things were busy, but she ultimately went to the doctor who advised her to get some more tests. Um, these things of course take time and when she had a biopsy in September, it revealed a mass in her throat and she was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. This was incredibly surprising and difficult for our family. My mom was a very vibrant, energetic, passionate person, and to hear this news was, was devastating to us. We were connected with the BC Cancer Agency, and in a phone call that I was able to participate in with my family, they outlined treatment options for us, and based on my mom's age, her health, and what they knew of the mass at the time, it was recommended that we proceed with radiation, which is what our family did. Well, it's been approximately about six weeks that now we are in our new digs. Our former residence was located at the Young and Eglinton area in uptown Toronto on a quiet residential street. Just to give a flavor, um, Young Street is a vibrant street. It's packed with people. There are lots of cafes, restaurants, uh, crowded patios, boutiques, bookstores, and a lot of other amenities. And for the last uh, 15 months, we have been going through COVID lockdown. Both of our children live abroad. My sister lives in Toronto, but we don't meet because of COVID. So we communicate with families and friends via phone, uh, Zoom sessions, and FaceTime. And then every weekend with just two of us, we would just sit in the car and go for a drive. And invariably, we would end up at the Ismaili Center Toronto that gave us some peace and solace. This routine went on for a few months. Then one day out of the blue we got an opportunity 
to go and see the condo near the Ismaili Centre, Toronto. What a coincidence! So on a very bright Saturday afternoon, nothing better to do. We said, wow, let's go and see this condo. It's a fun event for us. So we came here, we entered the unit and both my husband and I fell in love. Our six siblings, uh, three of us are married and the other three are single. Uh, my oldest brother is living abroad with his family and the rest of us are in Canada. Uh, we arrived in Canada on December 2002 after uh, living two and a half years in Pakistan. Uh, my dad came uh, with us and my mom passed away in Afghanistan uh, a long time before. I'm married and currently my father lives with me along with my two sisters and my brother who are single. Uh, my father lives into his 80s. His well-being, comfort and safety are always our top priority. And as far as our future plan goes, we had the discussions that after we're all married, our uh, dad will continue to live with us based on his desire and wishes. And as you know, within our uh, community, traditionally uh, parents uh, live with their uh, son. But our goal is that uh, we all uh, collectively uh, provide the care to our uh, dad on a rotation uh, fashion. Uh, this helps us to keep a close contact with our dad on a regular basis. Uh, this will also help reduce the burden of care. And what I mean by that is uh, that we do not want to make one or two of his children responsible. They can burn out and uh, and as a result, my dad will not receive the quality care uh, he needs. And the important aspect of this uh, decision is that each of us to provide my dad with the space where he can call it always his own home. After the first radiation treatment, we learned that the cancer had spread quite aggressively over the last couple of weeks. And we had a chance to speak to a palliative care team at our local hospital who basically outlined for us that because of the seriousness of the situation we had some difficult decisions to make as a family. Uh, my mother was in Vancouver with my father and brother and I live in Toronto but was lucky to travel to Vancouver to be there with my family and have these conversations in person and we asked my mom what her wishes were and this was incredibly important for us because without having had that conversation we may have made some different decisions but it was important for her to maintain her dignity she wasn't in a lot of pain and that was very important to her she wanted to enjoy the quality of life that she had with the time she had left and be able to spend that with family and friends and she was incredibly strong in our faith and didn't fear what was coming as an end but really as the next step in her journey so understanding all of this we together decided that the radiation would not continue and the focus shifted to her comfort and care both my husband and i once we saw the condo we went home and we had not anticipated that we would downsize right now. We had talked about relocating and downsizing in the next two to three years time frame. So we went through a whole list of getting all the pros, all the cons, and we went back and forth and we found that there were more pros for us than cons. We had also scheduled a session with our children and they both live in different time zones. So we spoke with them and they said, maybe it is a good idea for you guys to move right now because of your age. And uh, also, whatever pleases you, wherever you're happy, that's what matters in the end. We will support you. For providing and maintaining quality of life, 
We believe that living with his adult children not only provides him with a better care, but also provides him with opportunity for life, long family and social interactions. His needs are so different from 20 to 30 years back. When he was an adult, he valued working and earning money, but now he loves to socialize and attend parties at all the time. Therefore, we believe that if he spent time with his children and grandchildren, uh, this can fulfill his social needs as well as benefit his physical, mental and emotional health. For example, my dad loves to get ready to go to places or visit the family member. So when each of us takes a turn to pick him up uh, and when he is received with warmth, by his uh, children's family on a weekly or monthly basis, it would give him a little extra uh, feeling of joy. And that's what we believe. For our family, we were incredibly fortunate to be able to have these conversations together in person and be there for each other during this difficult time as we talked to different medical professionals and we asked our questions it really helped us ensure that we were moving forward together in a way that we all felt really comfortable with and that was and that was in line with my mom's wishes once the decision was made to no longer continue radiation we were offered a spot at the palliative care unit in our local hospital we didn't have much experience directly with palliative care but we were incredibly fortunate to be surrounded by a team of health professionals who were incredibly compassionate, who were focused on my mom's care, who were empathetic, who were available to talk to us and answer our questions and really take care of my mom in a way that was led by her wishes. I was lucky as well because I got to stay in the same room with my mom overnight and so our family really got to spend a lot of quality time together and benefit from that time that we did have with my mom. So there were four key factors that we went through. Number one was downsizing from a big house to a condo that will allow us to manage the smaller space and maintain that smaller space better. Number two, um, our faith. We want to focus on the spiritual aspect of our life and inshallah, we would like to be more regular in Jamaat Khana. Number three, it is very important for us that we have all these amenities. We have natural trails around here, there are lots of other parks which we haven't yet explored. Um, we were within close proximity to the botanical gardens, easy access to shopping, dining. Um, we have grocery store within walking distance. There are medical facilities. Number four, it's the environment of communal and social interaction. This is one of the fundamental principles of positive aging and it helps prevent mental and physical health challenges. As I reflect back on the experience we had and what we took away from it, I think there were several things that were very important. The ability for us to have meaningful conversations as a family, to be able to understand my mom's wishes and really do everything in our power to help see them through. The time that we had to get our family's affairs in order was also really important. And finally, the strength that my mom had in our faith until the end that helped the people around her find strength as well. Absolutely, it uh, not only strengthened our bonds as siblings, and grown uh, children with our uh, father, but also reminded us of our responsibilities of how to return him the life sacrifices that he made as a great father for his children. One of the things that really helped our family through this time 
was the energy that came from my mom herself. She was able to maintain a positive disposition. She was thankful and expressed gratitude, reminded us to do the same. She would ask people to wish her a happy journey. That's how firmly she was rooted in our faith. And all of those things really helped us get through this experience together and look back in a way that we felt proud of as a family, as difficult as it was in the moment. تمام این داستان ها کاملا شگفت انگیز بودند. بسیار سپاسگزارم که آنها را با ما به اشتراک گذاشتید. اکنون من می دانم که برنامه ریزی برای آینده یک گفتگوی دشوار است. و آن گفتگوی است که من واقعا زیاد نداشتم. اما من می دانم که مادر بزرگ 35 سال پیش شما تصمیم بزرگ را با پدر بزرگ گرفتید. بله ما تصمیم گرفتیم که در نزدیکی جماعت خانه بمانیم. بنابراین اگر نمی توانیم رانندگی کنیم می توانیم پای پیاده به جماعت خانه برویم. و این کار خیلی خوبی بود و مادر آیا تو و پدر طی این سالها تصمیمات برای آینده تان گرفته اید؟ البته که ما گرفته ایم وسیعت های ما را انجام داده ایم وکالت خود را انجام داده ایم ما اخیرا توافق نامه های نمایندگی خود را نیز انجام داده ایم اما من بیشتر به صورت عملی فکر می کنم خانه که به آنجا منتقل شدیم اطمینان حاصل کردیم که یک اتاق خواب و یک حمام در سطح اصلی قرار دارد بنابراین در آینده اگر نتونیم از پله ها بالا برویم باز هم می توانیم در خانه خود باقی بمانیم خیلی باهوش اما من می دانم که انجام این مکالمات در سطح عمیق به اعضای خانواده دشوار است بنابراین به همین دلیل همانطور که قبلا اشاره کردم بسیار هیجان زده هستیم که کهیر لالجی را به اینجا بیاوریم تا کمی درباره آن ابزار صحبت کند که با شما امکان می دهد این مکالمات را تسهیل ببخشید من اول این هفته کمی با او صحبت کردم. Kahir, it's an absolute honor to have you here today, an old friend, but a brilliant individual who is here to share so much with us. Really, really excited to have you here with us. Well, you know, I want to I want to get you right away to kick off and tell us a bit about this really interesting toolkit online that you've been working with the Jamaati Institutions and United Way to put together. Thank you, Zara, for for your kind words. It's a really exciting initiative, the Aging in Place Toolkit. And it has come from an understanding that families, our loved ones, our care, our, the ones that we care for, as we age throughout life, really would benefit from some pre-planning, some a proactive approach to ensure that 10, 15 years down the road, we are able to live a good quality of life. And the Aging in Place Toolkit, which was created in 2015, um, has now been updated uh, so that we're able to facilitate conversations amongst ourselves and our loved ones to better prepare for what later life may have to offer. Now you say it allows you to look into the next 10 to 15 years. So the next thing that it really sparks in my mind is I'm so lucky I've got two parents. I want to know how to take care of them. And I imagine that's a question that many people in their 30s like me may be thinking about as well. My parents are still out there working. I'm not really thinking about them aging. Um, but I think this this is kind of that reality check where we probably need to start thinking about that. So talk to me a bit about how this toolkit can kind of facilitate a safe and open type of conversation to happen at home. Look, Zara, these conversations are, are tricky to have. We all are so busy in, in our day-to-day -day lives that we often don't have an op opportunity to sit back, to reflect, and to have these open, sometimes difficult conversations, whether it has to do with future financial situations, whether it has to do with future transportation. Do I want to attend Jamaat Khanna regularly as I age? Who do I want to live close to when I age? How will my, my mobility, my access to resources change? And so these are all key fundamental pieces that this toolkit aims to inspire conversation about. So, you know, you've really, you've brought so much knowledge to all of us. You've talked about this toolkit. You've talked about the difficulty of having this conversation and how this will hopefully help with that. Now, paint me a bit of a real life picture. I want you to perhaps Paint something as far as we're sitting down, we're talking to mom and papa, we're talking to mom and dad, perhaps our younger sister. Paint that picture for me of how this tool can be used in a real life situation. 
There's so many opportunities to engage in conversations. This toolkit is based on nine different domains. One's health, one's home, one's community, one's access to transportation, etc. And all of us, all of our lives will be impacted differently by each of these aspects of our life. This really is an opportunity to have a conversation over dinner, over a cup of chai, uh, as well as a family unit to, to discuss what the future plans would be. We know advanced care planning is also uh, one area that we know if pre-planning is not done, it can lead to crises. And so this really is an opportunity to have conversations around where we see ourselves in terms of our quality of life down the road, but also what steps we need to take now. Maybe we need to have a few healthier meals each week. Maybe we need to be a little bit more active. Maybe we need to go and see our healthcare provider, the healthcare provider that we've been delaying for the last year or fifth or two years. And so it's meant to inspire conversation, to facilitate dialogue, to create personal action plans, which are really relative to each individual and to inspire action now. Now, Kai here, before I let you go, the very obvious question, quickly tell me where I can actually find this toolkit. You can find this toolkit at www.agingandplaceplan.ca. All right, I'll make sure to save that website. Thank you so much, Kai here, for all of your hard work on this. And I'm really, really excited to actually sit down with my entire family, all three, maybe even four generations, to discuss to learn and to figure out our future. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Zara. خیلی ممنون کاهر. صحبت کردن با شما بسیار آموزنده بود. من می دانم که خانواده من چیزهای زیاد آموختن و مطمئن هستم که بسیاری دیگر از ازای خانواده ها نیز این کار را کرده باشند. بنابراین هر کسی که می خواهد کمی بیشتر در مورد این ابزار بیاموزد در صورت تمایل به سایت agingplaceplan.ca مراجعه کنند. حالا مادر بزرگ فکر کنم قسمت مورد علاقه شما در این برنامه است. وقت اجرای موسیقی است. به عنوان مادر یک روزنامه‌نگار بودن در این طرف کامره افتخار واقعی بود است. در واقع احساس می کنم امروز باید روز کاری پدر مادر باشد. بله، این کاملا برای من بسیار سرگرم کننده بود. من دو فرد مهم زندگیم را با خود داشتم و امیدوارم شما نیز با برخی از مهمترین افراد زندگی خود نشسته باشید. بسیار سپاسگزارم و هفته عالی را سپری میکنیم. در امان باشید. یا علی مدد. Say hey, hey.
फिर महंगी हवाएं Hasil pura dar dar.